Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another video. You know, I've done a lot of videos over the years about storytelling, uh, and I'm going to link to the playlist that allows you to view all of them. But today I'm bringing uh, all my advice together into a single video, uh, listing 10 of what I feel are the most important ingredients of good storytelling. And uh, as I talk about these things, I'm going to be working on this drawing of Edna Mode. Uh, in honor of, of course, uh, Incredibles 2. Uh, can't wait to see it myself. I'm a huge fan of the original. Um, so let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and get into these 10 different elements. Think of it as a checklist, almost, that you could use for your own stories. Uh, if you've got uh, 8 or 9 or 10 of these elements, you are in good shape, I think. Here's number one. Characters that the audience cares about. I put this number one for a reason, because I think it is absolutely the linchpin of good storytelling. If you don't have characters that the audience cares about, everything just falls apart. And I think we've all had that experience of uh, watching a movie, uh, and you're just like, I don't care. I don't care about th these people. I don't care <laughs> about what happens next. If you don't connect to the characters, Everything falls apart, no matter how many fancy, amazing action scenes uh, you write, no matter how original uh, your ideas are. You've got to have characters that people care about. Now, there's two different things that are, I believe, required to get to this stage of us caring about the characters. One, you just need to spend some time with them uh, at the beginning of the story, maybe seeing the characters' ordinary lives. Um, it's okay to have a, a, an incredible action scene right at the beginning, but at some point you need to slow things down. Let us spend some time. Let us get to know these characters. Uh, so that's one thing. And then the other thing, uh, and I didn't learn this until relatively late, and that is that uh, when you see a character suffering a little bit, uh, you tend to sympathize with them. And so that's very common for us to see uh, the main character. Well, like in The Incredibles, for example, uh, Bob Parr, you see him suffering a lot uh, in this terrible job, uh, and we care about him. So that when we get to the razzmatazz action later on, uh, we are interested in him and seeing how things go. If, if Brad Bird had not put in all that stuff at the beginning, uh, we wouldn't know who Bob Parr is, and we wouldn't necessarily care so much uh, as the action proceeds. Let's move on to number two. An interesting premise. Again, putting this near the top, because I think it's key. Uh, and if you don't know the word premise, the premise is sort of the what-if question that launches the story. I always use as an example uh, Groundhog Day. What if you woke up every morning and it was the same day? Uh, and you had to keep going through the same day again and again. What would that be like? Okay, that's the premise, I would say. Uh, of, um, you know, the kernel of the idea that launches. And that is an inherently interesting idea. Um, I think that uh, almost any number of great uh, movies or stories could have been made based on that idea, just because it's so interesting. Um, and then, you know, in, in terms of how do you come up with a great premise, well, boy, <laughs> you tell me, I wish I knew, and then I would be able to come up with a million of them. Uh, they sort of pop into your head, you know, uh, if you're lucky, and you just sort of think, hmm, what would it be like if, uh, you know, what if these uh, people... Uh, that don't seem to be related to each other, it turns out they are related to each other. You know, any kind of a thing like that, that uh, that's enough for you to, to get a story going. Uh, so pay attention, uh, and you can, you know, you can sort of borrow a little bit uh, the premise of someone else's story, change it around, turn it into a new premise. Uh, it's a tricky thing, but make sure that you've got some basic um, story idea at the heart. You know, this is the day that something unusual happened. Uh, if you've got a story in which nothing unusual happens, um, maybe you're in trouble <laughs> because we want, we want to hear about the day that something happened, something interesting. Uh, here we go, number three. A conflict at the heart of the story that isn't easily solved. Uh, this is a very common thing. People say stories require conflict, and gen gen generally speaking, when the conflict kicks in, that's when the story really gets going and becomes exciting. Um, so if, again, you have written a, a day about where everything, everyone's just having picnics and birthday parties and everything's fine, we're, you know we're just not going to be very excited to see what happens next. Conflict is what drives uh, the story forward. So, you know, the, there's the picnic, and then suddenly there's a kidnapping, okay? Automatically this becomes 
more interesting because there's a conflict and we're eager to see what happens next. So yeah, make sure that you've got conflict at the core of your story and as I added in here, uh, it isn't easily solved. Very often amateur uh, writers, they keep coming up with uh, conflicts and then sort of solving them quite quickly. And uh, that's not very satisfying. You need, uh, you need a substantial problem that's going to take you know, the entire story, really, of effort and events uh, to finally get it fixed. Or not fixed, because you could have a sad ending in which that problem is not solved. But you need the problem, anyway, at the heart of your story. Let's go on to number four here. Interesting dialogue. Um, this one probably could have even gone higher. I think it's very uh, uh, important to have interesting dialogue in almost any story. Uh, I suppose, you know, the... Um, People might be able to find an example of a wordless story uh, that has no dialogue, uh, and that would be a, uh, an exception. All of these things, you can probably find some exception to them. Uh, but generally speaking, the great stories, the ones that we really fall in love with, have great dialogue, and um, that doesn't just mean a zinger line of some kind that's like, oh, yeah, man, remember when he said that one thing? I think the real heart of the story is continuous high quality dialogue um, from beginning to end. Uh, yeah, it's great if you can come up with some killer lines uh, here or there, a little catchphrase kind of things, but uh, uh, you know, it's the workhorse day-to-day -day dialogue uh, that really holds the story together and um, pay attention to it. You know, Make sure that yours is uh, carefully written. Don't go with the thing that pops, first thing that pops into your mind. Um, Take your time with it. Scratch things out. Rewrite things. Try to improve it. Let's move on now to number five. Moments of humor, even if the primary tone of the story is serious. Uh, so again, you can probably find examples of stories that have almost no humor at all, but I would say the vast majority of uh, the stories that we love are going to have elements of humor. Of course, if it's a comedy, then it's dominated by humor, and then it becomes kind of the opposite in that situation of uh, the comedy needing some elements of seriousness. Um, but um, I guess in a way I'm trying to cover both of those ideas with a single um, ingredient here. That is uh, a balance between humor and seriousness. Uh, if you've got only one of those and none of the other, you're probably doing a disservice to your audience. Your audience wants a, a laugh every once in a while, especially if you've got this super, super serious story uh, that is kind of relentlessly grim. Let's move on now to number six. Surprising twists, developments that are unexpected but still make sense within the construct of the story. Uh, and this is important. You know, sometimes we're like, oh, I need a twist in this story. And so you just start throwing things in um, to, to shock the viewer. No, you have to sort of prepare for those twists and you have to make sure that they are logical uh, in terms of the um, structure of your story. Uh, people, you know, may be initially pleased to be, oh, wow, what an interesting twist. But then if they're able to think it through and say, wait a minute, this doesn't even make sense. Uh, you're in trouble as a story writer. So, and I would say that this is uh, very much related to making an outline and planning your story out, um, uh, and and this helps you to to lay the groundwork for your twist. Hang on, I'm going to go and sharpen this pencil, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, well, as you can see, I decided to go ahead and uh, carry the drawing through to um, near completion so as to be uh, done with it when we wind down the video. But we do still have a few more of these uh, storytelling ingredients to share. So let's move on now to number seven. 
uh, an emotional journey that underpins the literal journey of the story. Now, I don't know if I've phrased this so well. I don't mean to say that every story has a journey, an actual journey, but uh, there are a literal uh, events that take place, let's say, in the story, and uh, you work that out, uh, but you also need to think about the emotional journey uh, of your main character or multiple emotional journeys for lots of different characters. Um, just uh, in general, uh, really good storytelling goes beyond the, the factual sequence of events to having a sort of a second uh, emotional story underneath. Um, and, you know, sadly, in the hands of uh, writers that are not <laughs> so good, that is this emotional story that can be kind of clunky where you can just see that they grafted it on and. Um, you know, the parents uh, were heading towards divorce, uh, but we got to, you know, by the end of the story, they uh, fall back in love again, and we've seen that sort of thing. No, in the hands of a good writer, you can take that very same idea and make it work, but um, um, take care uh, when you are uh, trying to weave in an emotional story um, that uh, sometimes that story can be uh, requires subtlety, let's just say, and uh, if it's handled clumsily, it can actually detract uh, rather than uh, enhance the story. Let's go ahead and move on to number eight. Uh, an ending that is exciting and or dramatic, in which the main character makes a final attempt to resolve the conflict they've been dealing with. Now, of course, in action movies, there is literally an exciting, um, generally very noisy, special effects-laden uh, climactic uh, sequence. But even in a love story, uh, or indeed um, uh, a comedy, uh, you will find that it, it tends to build uh, at the end towards some sort of, as I say, dramatic uh, conclusion. Uh, it can be very dissatisfying when a movie just sort of ends, uh, or a story just suddenly, you know, stops as if it was almost mid-chapter halfway through. People expect some sort of um, build towards a uh, conclusion that will be, uh, as I said, either, either dramatic uh, or exciting or both. Uh, so let's go ahead and finally, well not finally, Next to finally, move on to number nine here. <laughs> Bold decisions made by the main character that alter the course of the story. Um, this is uh, something that you may uh, find if you've got a main character that's kind of passive and is just being swept along by events, you may need to pay attention to that. Really good storytellers know that the main character uh, or characters should be making uh, decisions uh, at, at points in the story that um, alter the way things are going. You don't want these uh, characters that are just swept along by uh, events. And, you know, maybe it's even just one really big, bold choice uh, midway through or toward the end. But make sure that uh, uh, the characters are changing the way the story goes by way of decisions they've made, by, uh, by way of action that they choose to take. And finally, this one is maybe the hardest one to uh, pin down, but uh, I just wanted to get something in here like this. It says, an unusual point of view. The story allows the audience to see something they've never seen before. Um, just wanted to work in uh, this aspect of uh, stories. You know, you should bring your own experience to a story. You should bring something to a story that it makes it different from what anyone else would do. Uh, and the really great storytellers know um, that, you know, they have a voice that's all their own. Uh, there's something uh, on top of all this other stuff that we've been talking about today that just makes it distinctive. And, uh, you know, look at the story that you're working on and see if you can weave in elements of your own life, uh, or your own unique experiences that that uh, will, you know, cause the person reading it to see something from your point of view, see something that they have never seen before, uh, or be brought into a world that they've never been brought into before. And I hope that you enjoyed my little list of ingredients. I don't mean to say that every, uh, you know, if you don't have all ten of these things, your story's no good. No, that's not what I mean at all. Um, these are just things that I've noticed um, throughout my time writing stories and uh, experiencing 
uh, various types of stories have noticed that the really good ones seem to have these uh, different things in common. Well, hang on, I'm going to go grab my books so that I can say thank you to anyone who supported me by getting them. I'm bringing out all of my storytelling here. Miki Falls, uh, a four-book graphic novel series. The Brody's Ghost uh, story that was collected into a single volume, more than 500 pages long. The Drawing Lesson, also a story of a kind. It's a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw, and no story in this one, but it's chibi. It's my latest how to draw book. I really cannot say thank you enough to those of you who have supported me by getting any of these books. But I think it's time for me to lay down this pencil. I want to say thank you to all of you who watched this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.